Akai MPC1. Today I'm going to show you guys a trick that I do. I got a sample that I had been working on that I had already had a sequence and I like the drums but I don't really like the sample. So what I'm going to do is use these drums and use my chops and make a whole nother beat. What's going on guys? It's your brother, brother OTG. The OTG's for overtime grind. Hardly seen, but I'm always around. And today I'm in the Akai MPC-1. The Akai MPC-1. You know, I had a sample chopped up and I liked the sample. I liked the way that it sounded, but it just wasn't really resonating with me. So what I decided to show you guys today is how to work through work through something that you might not be feeling and then take what you create for it and make another sequence out of it with drums and everything that's already played in your old champ sample chops. So make sure you like, share, subscribe, comment. Make sure you check out the free drum kit down in the description. Make sure you check out the master class. This is all standalone, all standalone. So if you need sounds and different things for your MPC, you could get that with the master class. Um, make sure you like, share, subscribe, and comment. Um, I think that's everything, all right? So in this video today, we're gonna to take the sequence that's playing right now, and we're gonna make a different sequence. We're gonna use the one sequence method to arrange this beat. And then after I get a basic arrangement, I'm going to show you how to come back over it and add more to your full sequence. All right. So first, let's talk about working through the beats. Um, and for you guys that don't like a lot of talking, this is going to have a lot of talking in it. Um, let's talk the mentality of working through beats. You know, part of the reason why I created this channel and I do it faceless and constantly just show you beats being made over and over and over and over and over again is to A, get you out of the thought process that every single beat needs to be amazing. But people ask me all the time, what if I just don't like it? What if there's something that I'm not really feeling and I just don't really, you know, I like it, but there's something about it, and I'm not feeling it. Well, this is what you could do. So see right now, I just copy sequence one to sequence two. I'm going back to where my sample is. I'm going to hit the pencil on track, and I'm going to erase everything that's played. Now I'm going to go back to my sample, and I have my drums. And I already have drums laid, so now I could play around with my different samples that I already have chopped and try to come up with a different variation to the same drums. This is an easy method to make multiple, multiple beats. I use this when I want to say I have one pattern and I want to make a bridge or I want to do something else. This is where you will start to get in song mode. But also, this is another workflow for where you could come in and do what I'm doing right now, which is playing another sample and another variation and just creating another beat, essentially. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, comment, hit the notification bell. Make sure you check out the master class. You know, all of this stuff I do on my own and with the support of you guys. There's no affiliate links, none of that stuff. So you can donate to Cash App at OG, OTG. You can always just buy one of the sound kits or the master class. You could follow me at 365 OTG, or you could just like, share, subscribe, or comment. Or you could just watch. There's a lot of different ways you could support, but engagement actually helps the channel grow. It helps recommend it to other people like you. So now we're in our, our uh, uh, track mute screen. We're in our track mute screen. And now we're listening to what we have. And we're going back and forth between sequences. So I'm seeing first, do these two sequences match? If these two sequences match, then what we'll do is go into song mode and 
put them together, then come back to trap mute and mute it out. I have a couple of videos that show this. You can find it in my channel. You can also find it on the master class. Um, but what I want to do today is I'm not really feeling the first sequence at all. It's kind of cool. I mean, somebody will like it, but right now I'm not really feeling it. But what I do like is the jazzy feel of the second sequence. So what we're going to do is do our trap mutes. We're going to double it out. You know, if you move it to 128, all you got to do is do half length and it'll move it back to 64 bars. I don't think I'm going to want to use the whole 64 bars. I'll show you how to work around that as well. So we got our intro muted. I want to add some snares later, a couple snare rolls to fill in some of the blank spots. But first, we got to get a basic arrangement first. You know, a lot of videos, what we do is I'll show you how to get to this stage, but, and I'll tell you, after you have your long sequence, then you can come add more. But what I've never actually done is show you outside of the master class. Well, today, that's what we're going to do. So right now, we're just playing the mutes in. If you notice, we're recording them in. I always wait to do it last. There's a lot of people who start doing a lot of automation just in and their sequence at eight bars or 16 bars or something. I try not to do that because then you have to go to list edit. And even though list edit is cool, list edit is kind of monotonous and it's kind of a weird space. You know why everybody's asking for a new arranger window. I rather have a better list edit window to work on automation or make automation changes. So this is why I always wait and do any automation at the end when I'm trying to do any arrangement. It speeds up the workflow and it stops me from having to go to list edit and make all those edits there. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, comment. Make sure you hit the notification bell. Alright, so now I think I'm going to stop it short around right here. So we're going to do it there at the top. It's at 40. So on the sequence, I'm going to change it down from 60, 64 bars to 41. And that's where my ending is going to be is at 41 right now. I could go back and edit the bars and turn it to 41 bars. But for right now, that's just the first way to get right back in the loop of what you're doing. So now what I'm doing is I'm going to first I'm auditioning my snares. I want to add a couple snare rolls in. So I'm auditioning my snare roll. And what I'm going to do is copy that to another pad. So that way I can adjust the volume. So we're going to hold the copy button. You know, we're going to see, can we do some snare rolls and tune, which we can. And what we're going to do is hit the copy button and copy it to bank B and put it on a pad by itself. So that way we can edit the audio independently of the snare that's in our drum room. All right, now that we got that copied, we select it, we press a different bank, and now we're just going to put it where it was at. We're going to make sure to color our pad by pushing the pencil. Yeah, the pencil, don't do what I did. And then we're going to assign it the same color that I always assign it is yellow. And now we're going to turn on our 16 levels and then we're going to fix our volume and program edit. 
And now what we're going to do is record in our snares. I'm trying to decide, do I want to do it without the full level? But I want to have full level and I'll just adjust the audio. So now I'm going to uh, uh, record it in. Couple snare rolls. And I'm not doing this. This isn't the final version. You know, the final version of this beat sounds pretty dope. You know, I, do, I try not to put my final versions out because I'm still trying to... A lot of these beats have a purpose and they go places. And that's really all I want to say about it. You know, people ask me a lot to talk about my sales process and what I do with my beats. But I don't really share that. You know what I mean? It, it's I think it's proprietary. And you spend a lot of time putting work into your one-two of how you figure out how to do things and you know and until i see my channel really growing and things get into a place it needs to get to i may share it and put it in a master class you know marketing um how to grow your social media how to sell your beats things of that nature i may put it in a course but you know i'm never just going to give it away for free you know i'm not trying to shill and I'm just not that guy. I could show you how to make your beats better and kind of get them working in a way that will make selling them easier for you. So right now, we're adding in these snare rolls. We're almost done. You know, when it gets to 41, you can't forget. So you have to remember that you have it set to 41 bars. And once it gets there, it's going to loop around. So right now we're at 36. You know, I'm going to let play a couple snares over because I'm going to show you how to fix it. If it ever, you ever went over, it's not the end of the world. It's pretty achievable and pretty easy to fix. All right. So right now I'm going to go in. I'm going to hit play. You hear the couple snares at the beginning. We're going to go to notes mode. We're going to select those notes. We're going to select the arrow. And then we're going to erase those notes. Now we got a snare roll. So inshallah, this helped you. This helped you get a little bit more creative. It helps you come up with ideas if you're having a hard time making beats. And it also shows you how to add on to your sequence and start to stack your ideas up to have a full sound. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, comment. Check out the master class at the notification bell. And it's your brother, OTG. The OTG's for overtime prime. 365 OTG. Follow me. Another one.